Get work, watch films with your hosts, Tony Howe, Thomas Connors, and Robert Connors. Thomas Connors is your host this week. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Forget Work, Watch Films, the best podcast in the world, according to Empire Magazine. Um, if you don't believe us, check their website. Um, we said on the last episode this was going to be a Comic Con special, which is what exactly what it's going to be the irony is that personally i don't think it was that special hello guys you're my co-host this week as per every week how are you doing doing all right yeah do you know what we should do i, I was just gonna go i'm doing all right yeah and we'll try and mimic what, each, do each other's voices yeah and trick the audience but i can't do you two you could try well you could I you could. could try it i could yeah so fresh from comic con how you feeling post comic? How, you, how well, it were it wasn't it wasn't Comic Con. I think I think we've had this discussion before, where what you call Comic Con is is of varying degrees <laughs> of it's like like a meal, isn't it? Are mm. you gonna have a massive meal? Are you gonna have a sandwich? Oh, Basically, yeah. the San Diego Comic Con and then the Sheffield Comic Con, and it could be more different if you. Tried, but it was a first time event by the company called Event, mm. and they did a great job. It was in a difficult place, yeah. Uh, and they've already said that they realized it was a difficult place, uh, and they've already booked Magna for next year, oh. so that will be fantastic. Because I, I mean, I've never been to Magna. But I can imagine it's massive. Yeah, see, somebody told me that it were at Bramall Lane and it were a bit too small, so they were going to try a big venue like Hillsborough. Um, don't know how true that were. So, I would have it on pitch. So just talk to me then, Tony. Tell me what this Comic Con kind of was, like where it was, how busy it was, what was on offer. Well, it was set up in an executive suite. I mean, once again, I've got to thank the guys at Event for sending us free tickets. Really appreciate it. Uh, there were some r- really good stalls. There were a mixture of stalls. Uh, they've got a few stars there. They've got uh, Guy Henry, who, who plays Anson in Albi City. But it was only a very small venue. So it was basically like two small rooms. So when you go to sort of like NEC and it's massive and it's like two hall rooms, it, it were very different and it was just a little like nice little thing to pop to rather than it's not a day thing you wouldn't drive miles like we've done before driving but some to people Birmingham. will have yeah but you wouldn't not for that not if you knew Roberto uh, well it was... you look deep in thought then so you were it's really not... I was just looking at a picture of me meeting Bill Murray and well. it took me back to better times <laughs> right in fact no fuck it it's Christmas this is the greatest time I didn't think it was Comic Con. It were it was Comic Car Boot, wasn't it? Like I've said before, you just, it's no special. Yeah, it was nice. I tell you what, I did like, right? and I know this is going to sound really weird. It wasn't the Comic Con for us, seeing collectibles and movie props. But did you see the guy dressed as Thanos walking around with his son dressed as Captain America? No. They, I thought, they, I, you know, that's you always get a. I mean, how, it, it's for people. You must have oh, seen. Love. It. No, you, I don't you, think I did. Yeah, like a Thanos. Yeah, I say it. Were you not? Don't think like mega cosplay. He yeah. basically had. Remember our friend Kyle who came as Iron Man once. Yeah, similar sort of like so, I probably did see. His son were only about three or four, and he were carrying. And I think fine, put stuff off, like, put stuff on for things like that. It's a nice. But I think if you are, if you live in Sheffield, and you've. 
you've not got nothing to do on a Sunday and you're into films. I mean, it, what were it? It was £6 to get in. That's that's not a lot. No. Just to walk in and see stuff yeah. that you're not going to see anywhere else because it is quite yeah. unique stuff. I, th- I mean, you never get that fudge anywhere else. Oh, I want some of that. The thing is, as well, from my point of view, is we're at the level now we're quite experienced comic con as I'd say where the next comic con we'd love to go to is probably San Diego yeah we want now, to go bigger yeah now if somebody from San Diego comic con went to Bramall Lane comic con obviously well, it'd be just like yeah like you say it'd be a, like a car but, so, but, but that's but, not a bad thing mm. yeah, well, that's, it's just it's that, just like, very different and at least it, it, at least they're trying the, the word comic con is a bit of a blanket kind of yeah. term and you yeah. can't it's cause, more they're like, not all the same what would they? you call it then would you call it uh, pop culture uh, uh, comic stalls that's all it is yeah it? well so, no, comic fact, stalls hold on they didn't even sell comics well, that, well some did some did they were a mixture so pop culture event I think I think for a local simple family day out and like I say I saw a lot of parents with their kids how can we argue with that? I just don't think. Would it... you? Right, then I'll find this at you. When uh, Amelia's a bit older and she's got into it, which she obviously will because she'll know us, would you take her to that? You've got a Sunday free, you want to get out of Katie's air, would you take her to that? I would, but. When I left, I probably... I mean, they had Buzz Lightyear walking around. Yeah, had, I mean, if you've got... When she's older, but I wouldn't, that would be perfect for her. If for I had, her first time. If I had gone to that as a child, I would have loved it. I mean, we were oh, only walking down... Fantastic. We were only little walking Lego, down the street and a ghost was to walk Little Lego us. figures, Buzz Lightyear's walking around. I think you can't... For Like I said, we can't... You can't... You know, it's... You can find the negatives, but I think really it were... It's it's a good it's it's a start for him to do it, but I don't think the venue was ideal, and I don't I, think the actual stalls was much to see. I but think the negatives kids. were easy to find, and it's the positives that you've got to take from it. Mm. And I think once it's once you've got so many stalls, you can you're not going to get any more people in, are you? Hmm. So you can't take any more. So you can say, oh, well, there could have been this, there should have been more stalls, but we're never going to get any more stalls in. Hmm. That way it is. So, obviously, we spoke to a few guests there. We've got a little snippet of one of the chats we had. Uh, before we, I'll play that little excerpt, I just want to know what you want from a Comic Con. So what do you, well if you you you've got a weekend free there's a comic card what what do you want to what what would get you excited for it? right this is what I want I want drugs strippers <laughs> no that's just a normal weekend uh, you usually bring out the fruit pastels right I want stuff that you can't get anywhere else so it's like exclusives that you're never gonna see like and it blows your mind yeah. So, like, props, uh, memorabilia, just stuff that you'd think, bloody hell, that's amazing. You never, I've got to buy that. Mm. I want stars that are quality stars and yeah. are approachable. Yeah, and, even though we always bottle it. And you, I want money. You talk and to I want, him, no, you. And I want money in my pocket. That's it, three things. Um, uh, just, I don't know, collectibles and feel like you're at somewhat to marvel at. Not some shady car boot looking sale, do you know what I mean? That, but that's more for us, you know what I mean? When, like I said, parents set the kids, it's a fun day out, fine. But Comic Con for me, I don't know, collectibles that you want to come and look at, somewhat to see. Obviously, stars, but you know what? Nine times out of ten now, they're not even worth six quid for stars because they're, they're usually lame, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? Well, that's what I mean. That's why I'm saying, like, so I, I think mean, we're in, I think we're in agreement with that because yeah. I think, like I said, some of the stars do come across as unapproachable. I mean, I think honestly, should be more. What was the last one we went where we said, "Oh my God, so and so's there"? Who was that? I think for me, it would probably you were on holiday, Tony. I think you were in Skegness. We um, <laughs> it were when Ernie Hudson and Robert Patrick were there, literally a few seats from each other. Only Croatia. <laughs> yeah. Sunning myself. I remember stood there, I was stood on my own, and uh, turned around, and this is God's honest truth, 
uh, Robert Patrick, the Terminator from Terminator 2, were just walking towards me, staring at me intently. And I was well, coming that you yeah, like. No, he was just walking towards me, right stern, and I, was, I turned around. <laughs> I think you're looking for my sister, Sarah Connor. <laughs> yeah, I, was, yeah. I stood there looking a bit sheepish, thinking he's looking Robert Connor. And he stormed, he stormed up to me and he went, this guy's trouble. Pointed in my face and carried on walking. I was like, Fucking smash your face. I think I've got a video from when I met him and he signed the box to my T1000 hot toy and he was a very intimidating guy. Shot for job. Uh, and then, same place I was stood, um, somebody come up to me, put his hands on his shoulder and says, excuse me mate, you need to move. Turn around and Pele rasped past on his little scooter. That was fun. I got a video of that. Pele rode past me like, hello, <laughs> hello, <laughs> hello. <laughs> hello. Uh, well, well, let's um, let's find out, let's listen to this little uh, chat from some guests at the Comic Con. Hey, how's it going? I'm here, Rob. This is Tony. And Tony, don't forget, forget work, watch film. We're here at Sheffield Comic Con, and we've got some people here who will look like professional Comic Coners, yeah. cosplayers, that sort of thing. So, is this your first cos- cosplay? So, cos- what's everybody's? What's your names? I'm Charlie. I'm Brooklyn. Brooklyn, yeah. I'm Alex. Yeah. Anybody? Phoebe. Yeah. Phoebe. Yeah. Phoebe. So what's the what's the whole thing? What's what's you know what? What are you dressed as? What is it? Remember, this is radio. You will yeah, not yeah. be able to see what we yeah, can yeah. see. Yeah. Um, I'm Junko Inoshima from a game called Danganronpa. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Mina from My Hero Academia. All right, yeah. So this is all anime, yeah? Yeah. yeah. We're not yeah. from all of us a week. So is this no. your first Comic Con? No. no. So what Comic Cons have you been to before? Manchester, YCC, um, YCC Ball. What's YCC? Um, Where's that one? Yorkshire Comic Con. All oh, right, yeah. Um, uh, Doncaster Unleashed. Yeah. Right. Oh, you go to, out uh, of this world. You go to Birmingham, any scene? you go to Memorabilia, Collectomania, anything like that? Yeah, Geekomania. Yeah. Do all those ones. To follow them around. So this is first yeah. one. Have you have you been to the previous ones at Arena? Yeah. 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 So this is first one at Bramall Lane. What do you think? It's a bit small. Um, yes. But it's like it's really good. There's so many different stalls to choose from, and so many different things that you can do. Yeah, we kind of thought. So that. so who's been to Collectomania? You've been to Collectomania. So Collectomania is one that's more aimed at loads of stars and that isn't it what do you prefer? Do you prefer stars or do you prefer stalls or do you prefer a mixture of both? I just prefer, I prefer a mixture. mixture. Yeah, I so there's no really big stars here, Guy Henry from Holby yeah, City. I met the guy from, who plays Freddy Krueger, right? Oh, Robert yeah, England, Robert yeah. England, he were at Sheffield one. He's pre- previously at Sheffield one. So what would you say to people who've not been to a Comic Con? Yeah. Why it. should Go they come? It. Just do it. It's fun. Go for it, dude. Just, just have friends. a lot of money. Yeah. Even if you don't have the confidence to cosplay, it's a really good thing to walk around doing something you enjoy. So we obviously watch films, we love collecting we love yeah. things, but we don't do cosplay. Why do you think it's a good thing? Because loads of people do it, there's oh, loads of people on stage. Yeah. Without feeling that you're going to get yeah. judged. For me, even it's mostly mad. escape <laughs> off my own world, yeah, so, so I can just be who I want to be for that certain day. Is this, do you usually tend to do the anime stuff then, or do you do the yeah. other um, I do. I do a TV show. Yeah. I broke my finger. <laughs> Right, so that's us from Comic Con. We'd just like to say thank you for the interview and letting us interview you. Yeah? So we're out. Peace out. Yeah. Thank you. Your mom. Bye. 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 Cheers, guys. Thanks, Bye. guys. Yeah, so thank you for your time. Uh, the uh, Comic Con girls, it was very nice here for to talk to us. Tony's already ordered his anime costume. Yeah, what would that be? Uh... Uh, pro anime program. You, I can't even pronounce it. Never mind. Go on. You said it earlier. Shang, I, don't know, I can't remember. Shang, 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 Shang Dong or something. <laughs> but hopefully, if we go to a few conventions in the future, we'll get a few more opinions. Do you know, do you know what? Though? Looking at that, analysing that, we kept saying we were going to speak to people, Ray. And obviously, we're quite new at this. We've not even done twenty odd episodes yet. But it's actually harder than you think to approach people, engage conversation like that, in it. Don't you think? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think what what was hard because it was such a small event. Yeah, there were no. It's hard really, to pull somebody. There were no I- where, isolated area. Where yeah, you, that you could just pull somebody aside and say hi. And can essentially, we have a word? essentially, they're all there for the same thing. They're yeah. a fan of these movies, but there were a lot of people dressed as Ghostbusters, and obviously losers. Obviously, um, 
us meeting Bill Murray, Ghostbusters 3 is out next year, we could have had a good show. And it, I found it difficult to approach him, but the thing is, with, with these lasses who we met, as we were leaving, I were walking downstairs, and they approached us, she shouted, oh, you look like the spitting image of Mr. Beast. And yeah. I was thinking, who is Mr. Beast? Somebody who's on sex register. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sexy beast. But anyway, he's some YouTuber, and I actually can see the resemblance, only because he's got some fat stacks, you know, he's rich and shit, but, you know... <laughs> But anyway, I'm kidding. He had a similar beard to what I had. But they come up and spoke to us. We can engaged in an interview. But I think going to the next one, I'm going to get absolutely wasted beforehand and speak to everybody I can. Do you know what I mean? So, I'm going to get so basically, smashed. you're saying the best way to interview somebody is to go in drunk. Oh, can you imagine? You're if, driving. Can you imagine? If <laughs> you're you, driving next one. If you were wasted. You what, get a bit loose. Excuse it me. It is hard to just go... But I think what it was as well, because we are a fledgling podcast, we are still growing. But what we what we need is something to identify ourselves. Yeah, and that's what we will a do sign. next time. No, you know, not just a sign. What yeah. sign from God? Do you know, what I kept a thinking, symbol. I kept thinking, if I'm going to go speak to somebody, what is the purpose of me speaking to them? What am I asking them? What is what? Why? But the idea is. Just to get a flavour of why they go to these things. What do yeah. they enjoy? Do they like these... You know, it's it's just to open up the the, the, the discussion of why Comic Con's there in the first place. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, tell them... Well, these are the same sort of people that like the similar things to yeah. what we do. Which is so, just... But what, what I always find uh, intriguing is... Is what... Is those differentiating sort of like likenesses. Yeah, and yeah. what I mean by that is is a different degrees of we like superhero films but we wouldn't go dressed as Batman, Superman and you dressed as Wonder Woman Well, I, it wouldn't happen I'd be Batgirl so, but b- people do So, it, it, but we absolutely love it to death but do we you know, don't love it to that point well, do you know what I mean or in that sense I mean, do you know what is, I'm saying yeah. I suppose yeah. it's quite interesting talking to these lasses though because they're in a different... Every single one of them were dressed as a character from anime, which none of us are into anime, but it's like... I do like it. I used to be really probably, into it, man. They're probably not into Ghostbusters. It's just somewhere yeah. that people can go and Well, get... I think when you go to these places, I'll tell you what you find now. I've said this before. Licorice all sorts. You get a right pick and mix. Yeah. There is so many different types of Walks people. Alive. Young, old, boys, girls, women, men, families... People dressed up, people not dressed up, blokes with cameras. You get absolutely all sorts. Yeah. I mean, these were all like um, 20-odd-year-old lasses, all in the favourite anime. But then there were some guys who were 60, 70, dressed as characters from Alien. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. It's, if we... <laughs> I'll be better next time. Next time, if we go to speak to people... I mean, they could promote, They could be dressed for a charity. We get them on the speak of the charity. Do you know what I mean? It's just a... I think it's about sharing that love yeah. of... Because I think what we said from the start is this is, even though it's called Forget Where to Watch Film, it's not just specifically about film, even though we do spend a lot of talking about film. We also love TV yeah. shows. Well, it's we pop, love comic it's books. pop culture, isn't it? We perfect. love comic books. I, I, do like, I used to be right into anime. I used to watch it a lot. Don't watch it as much now. Let's, can I just say, though, the term Comic Con? Comic Con is not just about comics. No, is it? It's no, the same it's not. Thing. Which it's just an open discussion. But like I say, I would have liked to have speak to the guys about Ghostbusters, etc., etc. You know, even the guys. There were a guy walking around. What, what's the guy's name? Who was the alien burst through in Alien first one? It's John Hurt's character, isn't it? I can't yeah. remember. Uh, we should. I think Dallas is captain, and there's Ripley. <laughs> you know, and Ripley. There's... basically. If I'm going to get it. It'll come to me in a obviously, second. Obviously, that guy's clearly a big fan of Alien. Yeah. But for me, Covenant has killed that franchise. Prometheus sort of did it a little bit. But if you were to go up to him and ask him, how are you still a fan considering how Yeah, bad- because you might be not a fan of the franchise, but you'll be a fan of that film. Like my favourite exactly. film is Alien. But don't you think that... But I hate... Alien at Covenant and I'm not a massive fan of Prometheus see everybody goes on about Covenant but don't forget Aliens 3 weren't that great 
No, Alien 3 was <laughs> terrible. Let's yeah. be honest, the only two good Alien films is Alien and Aliens. That's yeah. it. You know what? I'm but, glad that we've started this sequel discussion because that's my next topic. But what my but basically what I'm getting at is in the future we are we do hope to speak to people like that to get their points of view. Franchises, sequels but is that guy only a fan of the first two or does he like the franchise regardless that's what I aim to speak to to these people so before we move on to the next subject I just want to say thank you once again to Event for uh, allowing us to go I want to say thank you to the girls I hope you're listening for allowing us to interview them and I think that I, I, I want to say that it was I'm glad I went and I hope you two are glad you went because yeah, I, I think mean, it was just how do you know yeah. if you never go and exactly how, and how did they perfect the perfect so you don't know in four or five years time it could be fantastic. could be massive yeah. yeah yeah. next time I meet you know Bill Murray in a golf course I'll tell <laughs> him about everything it everything starts somewhere doesn't it but oh. we will be back for another Comic Con whether it be Birmingham and we will be better because we're improving just like they are Mm, you two are, yeah. I, I'm already at my optimal <laughs> yeah, level. Well, that's um, so we're on about sequels. Beat me to it. Which which big films had a uh, sequel taught this week? Frozen. Joker. Frozen. Oh, what's out? Fro- oh, what's talked about? <laughs> Frozen 2's out today. Oh, we'll right. have to ask Jim what well, that's like. Uh, Joker 2. Is, well, that ended up not being true. Well... It, I, it's I, alleged. It was, it were all the big news, and then and then allegedly it were all a joke. Literally. Yeah. Well, no, I've read an interview with uh, Todd Phillips, and he basically says he thinks that it's like I forgot what term he used, but he basically said that these people are assuming that it's going to happen, but they haven't even had a discussion about it yet. But now, of, course, of course, they're going to do it. Yeah. Well, it's that, made all this. Let money. me let me talk to you then about figures and sequels. So. Joker it had a budget of 60 million yep. and it made over a billion there yeah. is not many films that do that that is crazy money crazy money yeah but money. you could see why it it wasn't it wasn't done for that much money because it's a very uh, filmed on the street sort of there's no special effects. No, there there's, no spe- so, there's no massive so stunts, you, you, is there? You tell me, because that's that. Is, Bad Boys Three coming out next year. Endgame came out this year. These top films are cutting edge special effects at the forefront of cinema. What got? I suppose the term is asses in seats for that film to make that much money. Well, you know what? One of the main topics of today, right? No matter, I don't care who you are, is mental health. In it, yeah. it's everywhere promoting mental health. This is not essentially a Batman film; it's a mental health film. In it, it's about There's a, life and how life can beat you down yeah. and beat you down and yeah. beat you down. And I think that, in a way, is a more interesting thing about what they've tried to do with Joker because I think they tried to do that before, and I think it's it. The reason why he's such a good opposite to Batman because life beat Batman down, he's killed his parents. That's an horrific event. Where do you go from there? Mm. So he uses that horrific event, yeah, and what's happened to him to then become a force for good. Yeah, yeah. While the Joker has been beat down so much. Where does he turn? And he turns into a force for bad, to you know, a force for evil. Well, do you know what I mean? Do you agree or yeah. disagree? Yeah, well, that's obviously the crux of it. But one... See, it's a funny one Well, we, we've talked about Joker on previous episodes, but what I want to know is, what is it that drove people to watch it? Well, Not what happens it. What is it? Do you know what? I was thinking to myself the other day, right? Why? So, for me, when I first heard they were doing Joker... I thought Joker absolutely does not need a backstory. And I still agree with that point. Doesn't need a backstory, does it? And what pisses me off with this film is, you know, I'm slightly off topic, but I'll veer back, is when they ask the producers or directors or, you know, even stars, what would happen if he met Batman? Will he meet Batman? Well, we're not focusing on Batman now. This isn't a Batman story. 
it is a Batman story. It is a part of Batman. You know what I mean? You can't just say, right, we're not talking. It's a Batman product, isn't it? So the discussion is there to well, be Well, I wouldn't say the word Batman. I would say it's a DC universe. Yeah, it's which part is of the DC universe. directly connected to Batman. But yeah. what yeah. we're we going to get at is the, the thought, I know a lot of people liked it, but the thought of Venom, the film Venom, I still cannot get on board with. I think it is utter shit. Over the top CGI... By the time the end of the film comes, you're watching a CGI mess, aren't you? The climbing spaceships, the fighting each other, it's all done on a green screen. Garbage. Whereas Joker, that film, and I think this is the important part, that film would work as a book. It's all about the script and the story first, isn't it? Well, I, I'll, you know t- I'll I mean? tell you so, Well, I'll tell you why it's done so well. Yeah, that's and This is I'm... the crux of it. It's, it's done. A, it's, a well it's done so well because of the reviews and word of mouth. I That's think you're why right it's done there, so yeah. well. Yeah. But because, it's not, not just word of mouth and reviews. A, no. It got but, a lot of bad press and there's no such thing. No. As, you know, yeah, like, but the bad press was... Well, like you said, there's no such thing as bad press unless you're uh, Jimmy Savile. Uh, <laughs> but because all the... Even before it came out, it was getting massively good reviews. Five stars. And I am, and I have not heard one person who's not liked well, it. Well, this is what I'm saying to you. Most of the other films that come out, and I only said Venom because that is a, it's the same sort of thing, in it? An iconic villain, and they've tried to do his own spin. You know what I mean? But it's all about... New name the last movie like that that was so grounded with little special effects and no idea of a sequel. There, there isn't one, is there, really? I mean, it, it is very different. But it's, it is so vastly different to any other exactly. sort of like film. Like that. The only thing I could even closely put it to is Watchmen. Mm. That is the only thing that it's a comparison to. So, a good... a good. It's set in 80s. It's set in real life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the cast and the writing is fantastic. Now, let me just stop you there. And I want you to be really brief here. Does this film need a sequel? So you're asking somebody who always complains about bloody sequels and yeah. how bad they are. But I think it does. Yeah, it definitely I does. I think it does because it's not a story that ends. It, yeah. And that's the thing. Do you know what? With, well? certain, with certain films... The, the story ends in my, and they only do the, the rest to like make more money in in my mind's eye I can see Joaquin Phoenix as Joker in his tailored purple suit a kingpin of Gotham City we didn't see him at that point We you need to see that don't you, you there's no other Joker that's been built up like that of course it does all that's going to happen otherwise is they're going to recast the Joker again we've got something now do you know what I mean of course it needs a sequel. Do you know what I'd like to see him as? is not a kingpin, but more a uh, cult leader. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Leading so rather than, yeah. like, rather than him being like kingpin, yeah. he never gets his where he's to... like a mob boss, yeah. like Penguin has been sort of like more portrayed. Mm. I'd rather see him as more the downtrodden following, yeah. which is a way what they really were going and for in this first well, film. I'm thinking on those lines. A guy who doesn't really get his hands dirty, but he's clever enough to manipulate people that they do it for him. With well, his... he realises that's what power he's got. Because yeah, right. if you see, he sort of realises that at the end. Yeah, he clicks it. He, he clicks so, it. That is his power. So, I, can only, I want to try and talk about sequels. and Not not so much sequels, but what what's Todd Phillips, apart from Joker, what's his biggest hit? Hangover. Yeah. Unanimously, it's the Hangover, right? He made three of those. Yeah. That could happen with Joker. Who knows? What makes money makes sense. Now, I've got ripped hey, down... Right, that's a point. When he goes on chirping, he doesn't know if he I've deserves got, a sequel. I've got me. ripped down budgets and how much money they made. So, quiz time. So, the Hangover... What a surprise. Hangover, the first one, the budget for that film was $35 million. Yeah. I got this information from Google, so if somebody disagrees with me, take it out with them. Todd Phillips. Yeah. So just just to uh, clarify, Joker's budget was sixty million and it made over a billion. Yeah. The Hangover's budget thirty five million. How much did it make? I reckon seven hundred million. 
It's going to be enough to win. Yeah, worry. I reckon. I'm going to agree you with you. can't just agree with me. All right, I'll say... Seven I'm going to say... Nine, I'm going to say 900 million. No, no, no. You actually both, I'd say, quite quite off. It made, according to Google, $467 million. Which, you know what? Uh, we have a big hangover. So that shows you how good Joker's done. Now, yeah. that is what my point I was trying to make. People look at the hangover as though it was a ro- roaring yeah, success. Joker's done more than double. The hangover is very... The Joker's going to drive a lot more people in than hangover is now now let me it is because if you're a, if you're a superhero fan you're gonna you're gonna no, drive yourself into yeah, the, I agree with what you're saying but at the same time super everything's superhero at minute you yeah I mean? but, but it's let also me, let me the just fact stop... that everybody said it was so different and I yeah. think people good well, to see that let me stop you there because we need to carry on with this little quiz so while we to, to see if right, it warrants to see if it warrants a joker 2 I want to ask you about the hangover 2 and yeah. 3 so, Hangover 1, 35 million budget, made 467 million. Yeah. Hangover 2's budget was 80 million. So they, they more than doubled it. Obviously, it was set in a different location. How much money do you think Hangover 2 made? I'll go first. 600 million. Hey, do you know what? I'm th- I remember now we went to see it and we pre booked tickets. Can you remember? It come on, tell me it went. Yeah. To let everybody know, every single show in is sold out. That see, was... I was going to think it went down, but I felt no, because first one was so good, I think it went up. Second one was massive, wasn't it? It's got to have, I don't know, last 400, yeah, 500. Right, I've gone. So, Hangover 2, with a budget of 80 million, grossed 586 million. So it made money than, more money than the first one. I think you're right with your logic, Tony. The first one was so good, it brought everybody back yeah, for the second one. Yeah, you went back. Now, if the studio is looking at Joker 2, and that's made over a billion, of course I think it's going to get a sequel. Now, this is where it starts... The, I mean, I'm not going to give it away here, but Hangover 3, we've all seen it. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. Right. <laughs> I cannot put across I mean, I think, it, that, I think it wrapped everything up, but it's not To me, to me, it's terrible. to me, Hangover 1 is an all-time classic. We've, we've talked on this podcast before, can films that are out nowadays go on to be classics, and Hangover is one of them yeah, that it definitely is, it can. Is a classic. They could not have not made a sequel. We'd have been sat here always wanting a number two, and number two was actually quite good. But to make a third one, to me, was yeah, just but, milking no, it. Yeah, but I think... I I don't think they should have made a number two. No, I don't. Because the the, the concept of it... Was a, a bit of a was one-off. Was a one-off. Yeah. So, this is what I'm saying. It doesn't lead to make another story. Yeah. So, I don't want to get into Hangover too much, because that's not specifically what... We, we don't want to review those films. But just, just to um, talk sequels and are they worth making, the Hangover three's budget... Was a hundred and three million. Yeah. So I bet I bet eighty percent of that went on their salaries. So a yeah. hundred and three million. The budget right. for the Hangover One was thirty five million. So yeah. it, it's absolutely skyrocketed. But let's be honest, you would ride that train till wheels fall off. If this, you've got a moment where you're on somewhere, you would make as much money as you could, couldn't you? Of course, you would. You would. But I mean, end of day, do you know as a, as an actor when yeah. the, In ten this years film time. is going to be shit? You've had, you've made one amazing film. You've really enjoyed it. You've had a really good time with your co-stars. They want to pay you double to come back and do it again. Right. You'd be mad not to do no, it. You do would. you know that no. that film's going to be There's shit? There's some actors that would and some actors that wouldn't. I'll give you one that wouldn't. Bill Murray. Some some people don't want to tarnish what the the the, the legacy they brought out. No, no, no. Yeah, well, he came back for that and realised it weren't the same. That rate, he would do another one. I, would, I was just thinking to myself, right? How many comedies out there have actually got sequels that work? And I really don't think there is any. But case in point, you were saying that the Hangover, the first one, was a one-off. It works as a one-off. Yeah. Now, I'm just saying this because it's one of the greatest comedies of all time, whether you're a Bill Murray fan or not, but Groundhog Day, same again. But if they did a film, Groundhog Day, where the same thing happens, what's the point? Right. Yeah. Before I... Well, that well makes, that's why that it's makes, such a brilliant... That's it, why it's a classic. Exactly. That makes that film greater. Be- before I forget to finish this little quiz off, let's get straight back to it. Right. So, Hangover, gonna, Hangover yeah. 3, the budget was £103 million. How much did it make? I'm going to guess 350 Oh, I'm going to say... I'll say 300 
it made three hundred and sixty-two million. So uh, yeah. yeah, I guess I guess they did right milk it. They, they got all they could from it because it got to the point where they, the budget they only made three times the budget. Yeah. Well, in a way, that can be a good thing because let's say the director Todd Phillips, how much money has he made because he wrote those films? He must have made hundreds of millions off them. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, sure Which puts him in a position now to keep his integrity and write a solid film for Joker. He did it on a low budget. I think, I think the thing is, as well, is with certain films, or uh, with certain aspects of cinema, the trilogy has become a sort of oh, yeah. embedded thing where a good film, it, you, you're going to get a trilogy. And it's as though that is the norm of certain things. Mm, or yeah. There's free Matrixes, there's, there's free this, there's free that. It's the norm. And I think, why? It shouldn't be the norm. No, it's You've true. got a good film, leave it. Can I just make a point as well? I'm sat here reeling these figures off to you and money and what it made and stuff. But if we can just forget about money... The quality of those films went downhill massively, well, didn't the, they? No, but the money shows it. The money shows where them films went. It does went. it because you get some films that come out and don't make any money, and they go on to be absolute cult classics and hey, massive. Let's be, let's be honest. Nobody respects the third one, do they? When was the last time you no. had a conversation with somebody about some of that happened in Hangover Three? Actually, for me, it was somebody at work uh, which she'd watched it when I, at my old job, and she she loved the bit with the giraffe. But that's the only. Person. I can't even remember that. No, that Why'd you buy a giraffe? I've always wanted one. That that you know he's driving it and it bridges too low and he's got it in back. Oh of so, yeah, that's so, garbage. So, yeah. See, so, I forgot. Well, well, because it's a bit of hot. Topic I can tell you everything minute. that happens in Angover One. Oh, it is a good film, isn't yeah. it? Don't wear skittles in the there. Irony, I hate know, Godzilla too. That's the irony because they don't know anything that happened in Angover One. So, <laughs> right. I know you've probably got strong opinions on this, but I've got to bring it up because is this a rash? Because we're talking about <laughs> the Joker. Is this to do with Prince Andrew? We're talking about the Joker. We're talking about DC. What's the latest news? That's what's the latest buzz in the DC world? Oh, Zack Snyder cut. Gal Gadot, Ben Affleck, Jason Momoa, Zack Snyder have all tweeted this week images and and stuff from the Snyder cut. My question is, do you think there is a Snyder Cut? Yes. Do you think it will come out, if so? Yes. And three, will it be any good? No. no. Do you know what? It should be Snyder Cut it into a million pieces. Who gives a shit? That film's it, done. It annoys. That film's done and gone. Anyway. It's like saying... Look how uh, angry there's a, there's a There's a cut of Gone with Wind where... He don't say. <laughs> it says, "Frankly, Scarlett, I'm going to stay and stays with you." That's a really that, that's probably what, just gone way off both this, your heads. This is another discussion that gives me eczema. Are you so fucking stupid? We're sat here talking about Joker and how of a much of a phenomenon it is. Yeah. So why would Warner Brothers go back to Justice League, which failed, to confuse audiences even more? Well, why it's just odd saying. It's as odd as saying, even actors are saying, yeah, we know it was shit, but just to let you know, there's, actually a, good, there's actually a good copy somewhere, so we're not as bad as what you thought we were. There's a really good copy. Now, my question is, if you've got a version of your film that's the ultimate best version it yeah, can be, it, why has that not been released to begin with? You had to leave. I, do you know you what? won't want to watch, you know the, you watch I, the camera I, I, cut I've of not, Terminator I've, 2. I've, I've only ever seen it once. I've not. I didn't. I ne- I've never watched it again, and I, and I do intend to. But it's just then you think, oh, I can't be out. Right. We could watch it tonight. Can I, can We're I having just, a movie night can tonight. I, can I just say, right? The imagery is cool. But ba- ba- Ben Affleck's Batman looks cool, doesn't it? Aquaman looks cool when he when he goes. But there is no substance to it. But a good point, in my opinion, right? So Batman Superman come out, and that was two hours and twenty five minutes longer. Summer they released. Don't yeah. even get no, me started. No, no, listen. You're going to lead me down the road listen, that I don't you, want to go You're going to develop eczema as well. We yeah. can scratch each other. So, Batman Superman, 2 hours, 25 minutes. Do you know what they did when the Blu-ray came out? They released the Ultimate Edition, which goes on for 3 hours and 10 minutes. And guess what? It's still shit. Yeah. That's the ultimate cut. Yeah. If, if Unless they cut fucking Jesse Eisenberg after it. 
then seriously, don't get me started <laughs> no, on no, Lex Luthor. No, but listen to me. I mean... Le- listen to me. So the, the saying that Joss Whedon come on and rewrote most of it and they reshot it, whereas Zack Snyder's version. But we've seen leaked things where Cyborg's origin story is in it, Green Lantern's in it, this is in it. How long is that going to go on for? Yeah. Do we care? Do Are we bothered? No, absolutely not. And I, I rate one of... I'm going to say it, and, and I don't want to, but fuck Zack Snyder. He is shit, isn't it? He is. Well... He is rubbish. He, nah, we're talking DC, well-respected movies, Joker's done well. Forget all the rubbish behind, yeah. it's done. Yeah. Do you not. finally got an eight. Run with that. Yeah. Don't all, run with shit. All these people... Cl- you know, campaigning. Can I, can I, it's can like, a, it's can like I, we're doing an intervention. Can I just, can I just really mention some of you? Jeff Johns, such yeah. a time. Right, there's never going to be a petition for a Phillips cut of the Joker, is there? No. Because he brought out the best film he could. And, yeah. and, and do you know what? It's all about integrity, isn't it? It's all about integrity. Just I know, move on from that just, just, film. Just to be clear, obviously, Snyder did have to leave the production of the film because he had a family tragedy. So that people are arguing that's why it wasn't yeah. as intended. Yeah, but that's fine. No, but it's just fucking just shoot. forget about that film now. Do you know what? Move on. You've got to hit work around that. You you now know what works and what don't work. And I tell you what, you can fuck Shazam off and all because that's a lot of shit. <laughs> can I tell you something as well? A lot of people like that. Only while we're on subject. Like who? Five year old boys. Yeah, this is a two year old this, girl. This is an interesting point, I suppose, for you, Tori. So, in Justice League, I don't know if you remember, it properly introduced us to Aquaman. Yeah. It is with Mera under the sea. And can you remember what happens? <sighs> they create a big yeah, yeah, plus yeah. bubble behind, around them so they could speak to each other. Over the top, stupid. See, do you know what happens in Aquaman? They just, just speak. Talk. Yeah. That, so, uh, just a convoluted, thought out mess. Yeah. Well, there's so many bits that don't, I but don't... But now to you, Aquaman works. See, I like Aquaman. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I haven't watched that again since, because I am worried that I, I won't like it, or it, I'll realise now and you what, know what the bits are that don't work. I'm one of these, like, sort of advocates for 4K movies. Like, you know, yeah, but yeah, if yeah. you watch Aquaman in 4K, some of the action, the set pieces, the CGI is incredible. Whether you like the film or not, it is. It's it, Some of the action is a masterpiece. But for me, Justice League, none of it. Is, is, I'm, listen, I'm so getting so angry. Release the Snyder Cut is an absolute load of shit, and they should never release the Snyder Cut. It is done. Yeah. There is nothing they Leave can it. do to improve Put it in that a film. box, put it somewhere. Exactly. I, and even if it come out tomorrow, I won't download it for free, I won't watch it for free, I have no interest. It is stupid. That's like saying, I know this film was rubbish. No, yeah, this is it. Look at this big pile of dog poo that I've got here. Wait, hold on. I've sprayed it with some Febreze. Have a look. It's still shit. Yeah, I put a ribbon round it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Done. Can't, put a, can't of, put a ribbon round shit. End of that fucking discussion. People are petitioning for it with passion. As well, though it's people amazing. Are fucking idiots. Yeah, because they. How do they know it's amazing? No, because they, they're open. They wanted a, these people who were petitioning wanted like me a bloody good Justice League film that were akin to how good Avengers were, and because they were disappointed, yeah. they're now thinking this is a saving grace. We are I'm having to do another film. This film already exists. Release it, and we'll be all so happy. Wrong. We'll be disappointed what? again. I thought to myself the other day. You know, I'm I'm such a I can be such a negative person. I'm gonna stop swearing for a start. This discussion just brings that whole side of me out even more. It is ridiculous. Yeah. And I tell you something and all Ezra's the Flash. Don't you right. done it. I'm you ending had with, to do it. Right, that you topic, had to do it. That topic sucks he's, now. He's a mess in next that next week it's December the first, which means we've come to the almost come to the end of 2019 Thank and I was thinking about it how many films some films that are out this year feel like a long time ago well, Captain Marvel Endgame. Captain Marvel well, this year I was like what Captain Marvel were this year I ain't watched that since John Wick 3 were this year which to be fair that one doesn't seem like that long ago Toy yeah. Story 4 were this year the, but I was trying to think of the films that are due to come out this year and there's only a Two well, one. there's one big film still to come. Yeah, Cats. The Rise of Skywalker. The Rise and of actually, yeah. Bloody Cats. Can I just say, do you know what? That Cats trailer, I couldn't even get through the trailer. It was horrendous. Do you know what? I don't think I've seen no, it. No, it is. It's, or if I ever blanked it out. Un- well, I found it I'm going to have to stop you there, guys, because we've got 30 seconds left. 
But well, I'm sure thank we you will for come listening back to, to everyone. Skywalker. Follow us on Instagram at Forget Work Watch Films. We're gonna have a movie night tonight. What are we gonna watch, guys? Die Hard or a Night Before. I've got my Christmas jumper on. Get, to see we're it. gonna get, have to toss for it. Getting ready for. Getting ready for December the 1st next week. We're getting into a little bit of festive spirit, so we'll be sure to talk about that on our next episode. Um, Until then, farewell. God bless.